you know, I, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, you know, Mark, Mark ought to be around. Let me go ask Mark, and we'll we'll figure this out together. All right, I'll, I'll get back to you once I get once I hear from Mark. All right, bye. All right, where is that son of a gun, McCone? Okay. Hey, Mark, you around? Ah, dang, I got a question for that guy. Hey, Mark, you in there? Mark? Where is this guy? There has to be some. Oh, Ken, Ken, I've been looking for Mark all morning. You have any idea where he is? No, and lab's about to start, so I hope he shows up soon. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll keep looking for him. I have no idea. I've been looking around the apartment, but uh, I'll tell him to come back to lab when he's ready. Right, thanks. thanks. Bye. Come in. Hey, Matt. I've been looking all over the department for Mark. Have you seen him anywhere? No, I haven't seen him, but he said something earlier about looking for more galls, something like that. What? Galls. Oh, I know where that son of a gun is. All right, thanks a lot. Talk to you later. I found one at dump! Oh. Jeez, Stefan! Oh, sorry, that wasn't me, that wasn't me. What are you doing what, out here? What is up? I've been looking for you. What have you been doing out I'm here? A, I'm looking for gold more bone goals. We need more data. We need more data. Yeah, the students, always more the data. students collected plenty. The data set looks excellent. We, we don't need you out here anymore. I do need you back in Hewlings to answer a question. I'm. Come on back. Let's go back. All right, all right, all right. I, 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 I have no idea how to get more. back from here. You? <laughs> I dropped on the left. Okay. Mark, I'm glad I finally find you out there in the ARB. Uh, I have a, a research colleague of mine on the phone. As you know, my research organism is the model eukaryote yeast. I have a little culture of it there right it here. There it is, right in your pocket. It is a single-celled organism. You can grow it in culture or on petri plates. And I can grow these yeast either as a haploid culture, you know, millions and millions of individual cells growing in that tube, or I can also grow them as a diploid culture, millions of diploid cells in the culture. I love your lecture on life cycles, mm -hmm. alternation of generation, etc. I'm just wondering where yeast fits into this whole thing. It, it's not a lion, it's not a <laughs> fern, it's not a flowering plant, but does it still have a life cycle akin to something you may have mentioned in life? Well, that's a great question. Uh, let's work it out. It seems like there's at least some similarity. It's a eukaryote, right, so it right. should, should be close. The model eukaryote. It should be the model right. eukaryote. Well, it, from what you've drawn there, it seems closest to alternation of generations, or haplodiplontic. And the reason I say that is it looks like there are sets of cells that are haploid and sets that are diploid. So in, say, a plant life cycle, we have a multicellular haploid that produces gametes that undergo fertilization to make the diploid. Um, and this diploid undergoes many mitotic divisions to make a multicellular diploid plant. That's where meiosis occurs. Uh, spores are formed here. Each of those can grow by mitosis into a multicellular haploid. So the parts that seem similar are these uh, multicellular, but apart in culture, multicellular phases of diploid and haploid. So I guess the question on the yeast is, how do you get between these? And it's got to follow those same rules. The way you go from diploid to haploid is meiosis. So does that occur here? And what I noticed about this, it's, it's 
haploidy changes. I mean, to go from a haploid to a diploid, you have to have a union, fertilization, yeah. and to go from the diploid down to the haploid, you have to have the chromosome number right. and thus meiosis. And I can apply these over here to, to yeast as well, now they think about this. So, yeast, although they don't have different sexes, they do have different, what are called mating types. Oh, okay. And so there are A mating type haploids, and there are alpha mating type haploids. Now, we don't say it's fertilization, we just say it is a mating, so a fusion of these, a mating. And that's what produces the diploid cell. That's really quite close. The diploid cell can grow in culture just fine. However, the diploid cell can also undergo meiosis. Perfect. To produce the four meiotic products, it'll be four cells that are contained in a little structure. Two of them will be of the A mating type, two of them will be of the alpha mating type. We call these spores at this stage. But then through meiosis, these haploids. Not through mitosis. Through mitosis. Mitosis. Uh, we produce genetically identical, I guess, offspring. Right. In this right. respect, right here, to, to form the, the, the whole culture. So I, I can see the connection between yeast and your, your haploid diplontic life cycle. And it's all about watching the changes in ploidy from 1N to 2N via mating, from 2N to 1N via meiosis, and then mitosis just to continue that particular step. So those things are all in common. There is an alternation between generations. The way you get between generations is the same process. What I find fascinating is that these mating types are different from gender. So here you can say a female is the egg producer and the male is sperm producer, there's no such thing in yeast. Now there's no male or female, it's just a, one of the two mating types. Arbitrarily, one's A, the other one's alpha. Sex without gender. It happens. <laughs> no wonder you study yeast. All right, it's all right, amazing. Well, hey, you've got a colleague on the phone. I, 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 this professor from Harvard needs my, uh, needs my response. Okay, well you just tell him alternation of generations. All right, I'm running. Thanks a lot, Mark. Have fun to